Today is the big one. 2,000 fans, 28 buses, and only six points between the two sides. It's do or die. The atmosphere is going to be at its best, but can the players perform? Yorkshire versus Lancashire, 17th versus 24th, and the real test for this Hull City team. Yes, today is crucial as Hull City take on Wigan in the 26th round of the most exciting league in the world, the EFL Championship. With the Tigers on the back of an incredible 1-0 win to Birmingham. Yeah! Oscar Estupian finally back in amongst the goals. <laughs> as well as Wigan, well they're sat bottom of the championship. Today is such a great chance to get another three points and finally steer away from the bottom three of the championship. But... As always, here's all the information you need to know about today's 3pm Monday afternoon kickoff. Happy New Year, everybody. Today, we take a look at the hosts, Wigan Athletic. Wigan, who currently sit bottom of the championship, have had a very poor start to the season, following six wins, six draws and 13 losses. Today sees the return of former Tigers Josh McGuinness and Will Keane, who seek revenge and goals against their former side. But, with Wigan being one of the lowest scoring teams of the championship, this task may seem difficult. Today, Wigan hope to get back to winning ways to see their survival campaign continue. Now, we move on to the history between the two sides, and I must say, it actually is really, really close. Now, they've only played each other on just 29 occasions, with the Tigers winning 10 times, Wigan winning 12 times, and respectively, 7 games that ended in a draw. The last competitive fixture ended in a 2-1 win to the Tigers, with goals by Demetrius Pelkas. <laughs> And Oscar S. Jupinian yeah! made sure that Will Keane's efforts to score against his former club meant nothing. Today, we take the 220 mile round trip to the DW Stadium in Wigan, which takes our season total up to 3,137 miles. That was just a long, just a bit, of a, a bit of a long breath at the end. I thought, why not? Well, then. That's enough from me at my home. I will see you once we arrive at the DW Stadium in Wigan. Come on, the Tigers. This is a vital three points. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hello and welcome from a not-so-sunny Wigan. And after two and a half hours, we finally arrived at the DW Stadium. And before we get into the lineup and a bit about the game, there is some sad news. Harvey Vale and Xavier Simmons not in the matchday squad once again. So it's almost guaranteed that they will be getting recalled by Chelsea. Now I've got to be honest with you, I'm very nervous for today. Today's vital, we get the three points. It would have been a lot different three days ago if we hadn't have won to Birmingham. And luckily that's put us up to 18th, about three, four points clear of the relegation zone, but we know one game can change it. Luckily Huddersfield dropped points. They uh, lost to Luton and then obviously Blackpool drew against Sunderland. So it's going to be a nervous game. Now we move on to the lineups and I've got to be honest with you, there's not a lot to talk about. It's an unchanged lineup from the game against Birmingham, which is a good thing. We won against Birmingham. We need to keep going and keep on the right track. But one thing which is a shame is Xavier Simons and Harvey Bailey yet again not in the matchday squad. Now Xavier Simons did travel up to the game today. But I, don't, I just don't know what he can do. I don't know what the players can do to get into the squad. It seems like the lineup's set in stone at the moment. It's going to be hard to break in and try and get a start in 11. So it seems that that's it. That's it for them. They're going to be recalled by Chelsea and that's a shame because they are decent players. I think they were both panic signings that didn't need to happen. So as always, here's a lineup to take on Wigan Athletic. In goal, Matt Ingram. The captain as usual at left back, Jacob Greaves. The two centre-backs are Alfie Jones and Sean McLaughlin, who makes his 50th appearance for Hull City. Right back, Cyrus Christie. The three in midfield are Greg Doherty, jean michel Seri and Regan Slater. And up front, Oscar S. Jubinian. Ali R. Saibanesh and Ryan Longman. Now today we are joined by some special guests. Now we're going to start off with a man that hasn't been in the vlogs for months. We've all missed him and due to new security rules at Hull City he's not allowed to be in the home ones. But we're joined here by Lucas. Yeah. He's finally back. We're all looking forward to it now, Lucas. Glad to be back. How does it feel to be back on a whole boy vlog? It, it feels great. It's, it's a shame that I can't go over to the West Stand anymore to do the home predictions. But I'm, I'm here at Wigan and I'm ready to do a prediction for the channel. We already know what I'm going to ask you then. Yep. Take it away. What's your um, score prediction? Well, once again, I'm going to say the same thing I've said in many vlogs. I can't predict us to win because we'll probably lose. Um, but I, I think it's going to be 1-1. One, one. I think Slater's going to score early on, very early on. 11th minute, I'm going to say. Oh, and then nice to take that. Wigan are going to get a painful equaliser in the... Uh, 74th minute through Wilkie. Oh. 
Now our second guest, and he's been on the channel many times, and many know him as the greatest Hull City vlogger there is. Now Joe is currently staring into deep space, thinking about Josh McGuinness haunting his nightmares. But Joe, what's your score prediction? Well, first of all, I'd like to say it's a pleasure to be back. Oh, brilliant. Um, and secondly, I'd like to say that Wigan is a, is a dump and their traffic management around the stadium is a complete disaster. <laughs> well, on to my score prediction. I'm feeling a 2-0 today. And I reckon we're going to have a bit of Sean McLaughlin opening the scoring. And then Ali Yar's on my mind. Ali Yar's on his mind. Ali Yar's on my mind, so I think he's going to get a... Uh, he's on my mind as well. Where's he doing? in the 26th round of the EFL Championship. A crucial game and hopefully this performance is a lot better than it has been. Quad City! And it will be number eight, Greg Doherty, the Glaswegian magician, to shoot against the away fans first, which isn't good. I'd rather be shooting close to the away fans in the second half to give them a bit more momentum, but we'll have to wait and see. Quad City. The atmosphere is bouncing, it's been fully all city for the first five, ten minutes. And we got a corner. Come on, sorry, good ball. Come on, Slates. Come on, Slates. Come on, Slates. Fourteen minutes in and it was worrying signs. Ali Simones went down. Luckily he's alright, but it did look worrying. The physios went up to help him. The Ali Chan obviously is out. But in terms of the performance, and it's been a very chaotic 10-15 minutes. We looked the better side, but we haven't taken our chance. We've had one or two really good opportunities we had to take. But to be honest, I'm not worried. I think it's gonna be a breeze in the park, I hope. Because Wigan haven't had a single opportunity. And I missed it! <laughs> I was recording. I was recording to say how good we'd been. It was a scramble of a corner. Alvy Jones tried to take an opportunity. It goes back out to Jacob Grease and he hits it. Appeals for a penalty. But we carried on playing and Jacob Grease takes the goal. Come on! Oh, what a goal, Jacob Grease. Top corner. That's the third of the season. And I missed it. I put him on it on record, but I'd rather tell you guys how well we've been playing. Incredible atmosphere. Winning! <laughs> well, it's Birmingham all over again. The Pyros have been set out in the 15th minute. I'll tell you what, it's fun being a whole City fan. We celebrate anything. We're 1-0 up against Wigan, and we're all happy. Oh, be a second son. <laughs> Jacob Green. Oh, I'll tell you what. It's turning into rude, all it? He's got the 30th minute and ever since the goal, the game's really panned out. We've had a couple of opportunities, but none really to note. For me, Haliar looks well, not match fit. I've heard from a few people he's been quite indecisive. It's a bit like Cyrus Christie when he first joined. Got subbed off and booed off the pitch when he was playing at QPR. He just needs time to get match fit and hopefully choose the right decisions. To be fair, I think we're going to win this one. And I feel really confident, to be fair. And I, I usually aren't optimistic, but for the people at home that have got me for not being optimistic, there you go. Watch us lose 2-1 now. In terms of performance, it's just been dire since the goal. We had real you know, motivation to get that first goal and now we're just sort of passing it around. They like what Man City do. They don't really want to smash everyone and get, you know, four or five nils. They're just passing it around. I mean, the fans are chanting way every time we pass the ball, so it shows <laughs> we're dominating in terms of possession. To be fair, it's been all right, but hopefully a little bit more action for the vlog, because it's going to be about 10 minutes long. Come on, Regan. Okay. Well, we hope oh. yeah. Corner, come on! Oh, well. Oh. I'll tell you what, that wasn't far. 
trying to recreate his Blackpool goal. 40th minute and the last 10, 15 minutes have just been boring. It seems like we took our foot off the gas pedal and we're just trying to see if we can find each other out again, which I suppose is decent. And we're still winning, that's the main thing. It just seems like we've lost a bit of momentum, a bit of motivation that we needed to have. I think at this point, we're just trying to get the fans going again and hoping for a <laughs> more action second half, I suppose. Please, Oscar. See what I mean? He just sort, they all just sort of stop. They don't have the momentum to go for a second. I mean, at Rotherham, at Blackpool, we wanted to push for more. We wanted to seal the game. But at this point, it's just like we're holding on for this 1-0 win. I just I don't get it. 45th minute and there's, uh, well, dead silence. There's also two minutes of added time. What a boring half. Nothing. Heartbreak again. Second time of the game and Aliar is back on the floor. The first time didn't look too bad. He got up. He, he ran it off in a sense, but he's, he's gone down, he's waving to the referee and I think it's his game over, which is really upsetting. And there we go, the half-time whistle there. Still players gathering around Aliar, who's on the floor still. I think it's his game over, he's looked quite poor to be honest with you. He needs to get match fit and it's not going to be today as he gets helped off the pitch. I'll see you all at half-time. Well, half-time here and it's 1-0 to full and usually I'd be celebrating, I'd be cheering, but it's just been that boring. I mean, we've had a couple of opportunities. We took one, and that's great. And Jacob Greaves got three goals this season. <laughs> More than Demetrius Belkast, Dohan Sinek, and most of our attack, which is great. We're winning, but I just think we could push for more. I honestly think we could get two or three in this first half. But Aliar looks quite tired. Obviously, he's now being limped off the field. Well, not stretched off, but they've helped him off the field, so it doesn't look good for that. But we've had them opportunities, but we sort of, instead of driving for the counter-attack, we sort of held the ball up and waited for other people to run down and by then all the momentum's gone. Now before I get back into the game, there is some very good news. Now Tank Kessler, the whole City chairman who deals with all the transfer, he has done an interview for Radio BBC Humberside and has said that Malcolm Eberwobi, I do, <laughs> I do apologise if I've just butchered his name there, is supposedly signing for holding the next 48 hours, he's contacted his agent and hopefully we can get the deal over the line. He's a great player, he was at Derby last year and now he's at Crystal Palace. And we're also linked to Venezia striker, former Brighton, Aaron Connolly. I don't know what to think about that. We've got too many strikers. We need, we need Ryan Porteous from Hibernian. We don't need another striker. Now we look to the second half and we look at the bench at the moment. We haven't got really one key player. I suppose Ozan Tufan could come off the bench and make a difference. But apart from that, you haven't really got one player that you look at and think he's going to make some magic when he comes on the pitch. Ryan Woods, again, is one of those players where he deserves to start, but he can't fit into the squad. I suppose Greg Doherty as well. He's not played his greatest game, but it's hard to take anyone off at the moment apart from Aliar and maybe Ryan Longman. Now, as well on the bench, you've got Tyler Smith. You've got a few others like uh, Figueredo, but... <laughs> I think Figueredo will only be brought on if it's a close game at the end, you know, 85th minute, and we need the win. So I've also been stood here with a good mate of mine. He did the score predictions. Now, Lucas, the blood the green has been a bit of a boring half. Yeah, it has, yeah. What would you... Just try and sum it up, really, mate. Well, you said it all for me. It's, it's not been a great half. Uh, obviously, great to get a goal, great to uh, go into second half uh, ahead, but neither t team looks really impressive. We both look like teams that... Are, Fighting relegation, sort of, uh, around down there. I definitely think we're going to go down. I think we'll we'll have enough in the tank to stay up. But I completely agree it's with not, you. It's not been a great game. Um, we need another one in the second half to really secure the three points, yeah. I totally agree with you, Lucas. And on to that, I think going down, it's probably going to be Wigan and Rotherham, and then it's a battle between, you know, us, Blackpool, Huddersfield. Now, Huddersfield have been at the bottom for a while now, but they've climbed themselves up. I mean, they've had a couple of good runs, and that's what I'm quite worried about. Well, I shouldn't be because we're winning and we won the last game and we've got some games we should be winning in the next couple of weeks. But, you know, I am still nervous. I mean, the championship's crazy. I mean, we could be mid-table by, you know, March and then still get relegated. It's just one of those things. Now, I'm not going to keep waffling. If I'm being honest, there's not a lot really to talk about. It's been quite a poor first half, but we're winning. That's the main thing. I hope in the second half we can get that second, maybe even a third. Get the fans chanting. There's over 2,000 in the away end today. The atmosphere's great. Let's just hope we can keep chanting and get behind the boys and hopefully come home with the three points. I'll see you all in the second half. So the boys are back out and it is true. Ali Arsai-Banesh has come off the pitch and coming on is Tyler Smith. Now, that's really upsetting to see, but it's, it's best for Ali Ar. He's been a bit rusty this game. 
and obviously that injury just before the first half ended. So Tyler Smith is back out, the boys are back out, and it will be number 20, Nathan Broadhead, to take for Wigan, but hopefully is an interesting second half. I just hope there's some girls. 55th minute, and the most exciting thing that's happened this half is a group of six kids in the Wigan end giving it large and then getting asked to move by a steward because this performance in the second half has been poor. We're going to probably be in the better team, keeping all the possession. It just seems like both teams can't be bothered today. I mean, we've had so many opportunities that we've held back. We could have had a counter-attack, but instead we hold it back and find for a pass, which is great for the possession stats. But in terms of watching it as a viewer, I'd like to see more action. And I can't complain with one nil up, and that's brilliant. And it doesn't happen often. It's just more the fact, watching this doesn't feel like a one nil winner. It feels more of a nil nil draw type of game. Kids are giving it large again, look at him. Oh, and there's goal music. Even better. What a poor. That is just so poor. That is so, so poor. I can't, I, I honestly, I can't. I can't even get my words out. That was diabolical. Honestly, so, so poor. We've been dominating for the first, you know, 50 minutes of this game. We've been doing so well, to be fair. I have been saying it's boring, but we kept hold of possession. We get one. You know, we turn off for one second, they get a corner, one of their first corners of the game, one of the probably first opportunities of the first half. We bottle it, honestly. Oh, it's just the same old whole city. I really hope we do somehow get back into this game, but now they've got the momentum. And it's now who can get the finger out or else this will end up in a bar draw. Once again, another opportunity where they could have easily gone up. But Ryan Woods is coming on, so that's that's gonna save us. Oh dear. 66 minute, and I'm not disappointed that the fact we conceded that goal, it's more the fact this game could have been outside at half time. I said it at half time, it could have been three or four nil. We had to take our chances. And I thought, you know what, it'll be okay because we'll keep dominating like we did do. And we, they've got one opportunity, they took it, and I went right back to square one, and I don't think we've got that motivation anymore. But in other news, Ryan Longman's come off and Ryan Woods has come on. How enthralling. That's what Ryan Woods turns into Perlo and somehow gets us three points. I've got to be honest with you, but there's not a lot to report. So I'm going to tell you a fun fact because everyone loves a bit of a fun fact. Wayne Rooney, you know, the Manchester United legend, is in attendance today. You know, back in his uh, former assistant coach, Liam Rossini. The fans are chanting da -da 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 Wayne Rooney. So there we go. <laughs> fun. About as fun as it gets at Wigan Stadium. There's now happening. Look, two bits of news to tell you. First one. John Mikel Serri is coming off the pitch and coming on. Ole 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 Zantufan. Hopefully he can bring some magic into this game. He's got the ability and he's more of an attacking player compared to Serri who's more of a defensive player. And also the second piece of news. Josh McGuinness has come on. Former City striker. Maybe gets on the score sheets and, well, breaks our heart. He got a lovely reception by the whole fans. A nice boom. Come on, Oscar. And we capitalised on the chance, we took the opportunity, and we're winning! Let's try and hold on now. Come on! Double substitution for Old City. And Louis Coyle and Tobias Figueroa are coming on. Two defenders to see out this hopefully three points. The first one to be taken off the Irish Cafu. Cyrus Christie. And second of all, I don't have a clue who's coming off. <laughs> I'll tell you in a minute. And second, the goal scorer, Oscar Escuvignan, coming off. For his 11th goal, I was mistaken. I did say 10, but he's got his 11th goal of the season. We all love you, Oscar. What a player. <laughs> to finish it. Tyler 
this man! He's doing it! Come on! Come on! We've done it! The three points is ours! Three goals, three points, and a three hour trip back to Hull. But we've done it! Tyler Smith! Oh! Wow! <laughs> well, <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Singing to opposition manager, brilliant. Sweater. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Come on! Forward, Tyler Smith at the double. The stadium's emptying. The whole city fans will be singing all night as we collect the three points. Come on, what a win. Incredible. 90th minute and I haven't checked in with him for about 20 minutes because it's just been mayhem. Tyler Smith coming off the bench, two goals. It's going to do him a world of confidence. It's great to see Lim Rosinha finally giving them squad players the opportunity to show themselves. The atmosphere has been incredible. And I'll tell you what, title charge. Just to clarify, there's been four minutes of extra time as well. Let's get another two. And there we have it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all City 4. Wigan 1, what a performance. Honestly, incredible. Players incredible, fans incredible. And I'll tell you what, what a day it's been. The first half was abolical, diabolical. It was boring. No action, but the second half, five goals. Incredible, boys. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, what a result. Hull City 4, Wigan 1. And I'll tell you what, the first 10 minutes were chaos. The last 10 minutes were mayhem. What a result that was. Some incredible goals. Tyler Smith finally getting his confidence back, scoring a brace today. And it feels like we're actually getting somewhere. And we'll start with the Hull City goals and we'll start with the first goal. And the first goal was a bit of a fluky corner. I'm not going to lie, it wasn't great. But Jacob Graves gets the ball out of nowhere, hits the top corner and scores his third goal of the season. Now, who'd have thought at the start of the season you'd be telling me Jacob Graves would be scoring for Hull? Never mind scoring three. We'll talk about the second one. Now, Oscar Estupinian, it wasn't the cleanest of strikes. Never is with Oscar. But it goes in, and that's the main thing. And then the last two, both goals by Tyler Smith. An incredible assist by Regan Slater. The day just can't get any better. What a team, and what some players we have. Now, although we don't want to dip into the negatives too much, we do have to talk about their goal. And it it came from an opportunity that shouldn't have happened. It was a poor mistake by Seri. Gives the corner away, and it was just a poor header. Poor corner. And at the end of the day, there's no nothing we could have done about it. it we should have really had that game wrapped up in the first half but we can't complain about the result now on to the fans and 2500 Hull City fans are packed out away end singing the heart out it was incredible at that final whistle everyone singing Liam Rossini singing E-I-E-I-E-I-O it was an incredible atmosphere. It could have been better, but we can't dwell on it. It was fantastic, and hopefully we can get the MKM rocking in the next few weeks following these results. Now we talk about the next fixture, and for the first time in like three months, we finally have a cup fixture. We got knocked out of the Carabao Cup to Bradford. That was a poor game, but this game is going to be special. Fulham under the lights at the MKM in the FA Cup against a very good Premier League side and it's going to be difficult but if they play their second team and we want to battle we want a good cup run because that's what we need we need a world of confidence due to a good cup run you look at Boreham Wood they do incredibly well in the cup and that gives them confidence in the league that's what we need against Fulham hopefully a good win Oscar on fire now once again thank you all so so much for watching this vlog if possible please like subscribe and turn on the notifications it's been an absolute pleasure taking you down to Wigan for this incredible game this incredible fixture and a vital three points at that once again thank you all so much for watching and I've got to be honest with you I'm going to have to keep this outro quite short and I usually say it every week because I've run out of ideas but this time I've got a cheeky little takeaway waiting for me as a reward for such an incredible win for Hull City because obviously you know I went onto the pitch and scored a word Anyway, I will see you all on Saturday. What an incredible result today. And hopefully we can expect the same. And hopefully a little cheeky cut run. I will see you all soon. Hope the Tigers!